welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather Lindsay and I'm talking about an area that we need to talk about. Can we talk about it? Millennials, can we talk about it? It's called, would you work for free? I wanna know, would you really work for free? And I wanna share my story of working for free. So you guys know, if you watch many of my videos, you know where there's a season in my life where God told me to work for free. Now, prior to that, and throughout that time, I've been serving in my church, working for free, right? As on to the Lord. That reminds me real quick, I'm just gonna say the scripture while I have it, Colossians 3, 23, work willingly at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord and not for people, okay. Um, now, I like that scripture and I want to include it in this and what I'm talking about today, but I believe that God led me to be an intern for a, you know, billion dollar company. I mean, they had money. They could have, they could have hired, they could have paid me. Right. But I believe that God sent me there and it was really hard at first because I'm like, I, okay, Lord, you sent me to New York city. I just graduated college. So, you know, Sally Mae is going to come from me, right? I have real life bills. You sent me here. I can barely afford, you know, my bills and stuff, but I felt like God sent me there. I had one connection in New York City, all those people in New York, and I had one connection. And I reached out to her and I was just like, hey, can I come and intern? I didn't ask her for a job. I didn't ask her for a job because I felt like I need to prove myself. If I had a, if there was a job available, she would mention it. And when I started interning for free, there was no job available. She just got me in the door. So I was there working every day for three months. I would work 40 to 80 hours a week, y'all, for free. I served, I ran coffee, I ran donuts, I ran lunch, I ran up and down them stairs every single day. I did whatever needed to be done. I was above, I thought, um, I was proactive. I went above and beyond. And, and I'm gonna tell you guys, you guys this, I just feel like we're a generation that does not like to work hard. We don't like to work for free. Everything is about monetary. Can I get money from this? But the thing is this, what if God's sending you somewhere and monetarily it don't look right? Now I really like Proverbs 13 and four, and I'm gonna read that to you. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. So which one are you? Are are you the sluggard or are you the diligent? Which one? So as I continue to, to work and bust my tail and work is on to the Lord, the Lord said, I sent you here. I'll provide for you. I'll take care of you. Yeah, it was hard. Yes, it stretched me, but I didn't go around and be like, well, I'm sorry. I need to leave like as if I was entitled. You know what I mean? And some of us are so entitled. We are not willing to sow anything. We're not willing to put anything into the ground. If somebody asks you to babysit, come watch their kids. You're like, how much? How much? She's a single mom. She just needs some help. She's tired. She needs a break. She just don't have no money. And the thing is this, I, like that scripture, will you do it as on to the Lord? Or is it about you? Well, you know, I'm busy. I got plans. I'm sorry. I got too much going on. The thing is, you're believing God for a family. You're believing God for all this stuff, but you're not willing to serve anybody else because it's all about you. It's all about you. If, if you don't get the stage, then it's like, okay, I can have the stage. Um, I want the stage. I want this. I want that. But are you willing to go behind the scenes and serve for a season before you see the stage? I knew God called me to the stage. I knew I was going to preach one day, but I learned service when I worked for free from my, from my old boss in that multi-billion dollar company that I worked in. I knew they could pay me, but I didn't walk around like, oh, I'm just an intern. My role is not important. No, I made myself so invaluable that when I went and took a break, I remember I went home from Michigan to Michigan for um, Thanksgiving. They were all like, oh my gosh, we went crazy without you. We have to hire we, you. We have to give you a job. I made myself invaluable. And are you willing to, to sow into anybody else other than what benefits you? We've become such a selfish generation. And I, gotta, and I gotta talk about these things and it's not a fun topic to address, but I feel like so many of us just want a handout. We're like, give me this, give me that. And then there's another flip side of it where you're like, well, how am I supposed to eat? How am I supposed to live? I knew that I was serving for free for a season. And I knew that God was gonna provide so much more after that. Um, I can go through countless numbers of people that are even around you know, me in ministry where they serve for years and years and years. And then it's like one per person in particular, um, Sydney, and you've probably seen her around me. I felt like I gotta pay you, like it ain't right. Cause you have served my family for so long without asking for anything. She just volunteered and just served. And I'm like, man, I gotta pay you. She wasn't expecting it. She wasn't, she's like, no, I, I'm serving as on to the Lord. I remember 
um, my boss came and gave me a check. It wasn't a check, it was um, $100 bills. It was like $1,000 in the envelope when I was an intern and said, you just work so hard. I feel like it's not fair. Like I need to, I need to bless you. I need to do something. If earthly people think like that, how much more will God provide for you and take care of you when your heart is right and your heart is set on serving people is on to the Lord. You might say, well, you know, I got bills. I got stuff to do. I ain't got time. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I understand you have bills, but are you faithful with the money that does come into your life? Because sometimes we're not faithful with the amount that God gives us and then we get mad because we spend it on crazy stuff and then we're nickel and dime to everybody else. People don't like to work with people if they feel like you're, you're nickel and dime me when you're trying to get over on me. I will literally not work with somebody if I feel like they're trying to get over on me. Like I'm just done, I'm good. I would rather pay somebody more and bless somebody else then work with somebody who I feel like is trying to manipulate me and get over. Where's your heart? Where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Is your treasure in money? Is your tre treasure in things? Or is your treasure in God? Do you trust that my God will provide for me according to his riches and glory? He'll provide all your needs. Your needs according to his riches and glory. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then get busy serving. Find a family that has small children and maybe just go ask them like, hey, can I babysit, can I help? If you have a gift, maybe of graphic design or video or music or something, help your local church and don't charge them. Whoa, I said it. I learned that when I sowed my gifts into the church, God blessed me monetarily with my gifts and talents in other places. Do you trust that God can do that? But your heart can't even be in that though, right? So let's get to the root of things. Your hope is in money more than it is in God. Let's just keep it real. And I think the first step is admitting that and say, God, my hope is in this world. It's not in you. I repent and repent of your sins and turn away from it and say, all right, Lord, show me where I can serve. It can be your local church. It can be wherever God is sending you. But I just challenge you to get out and get busy about serving and helping somebody else. The quickest way I've learned to get something, happen, get something to happen for me is to do it in somebody else's life. When I found out that one of our friends was building a house, I sewed into their family. Because I was like, you know what? I want to do that. I want to build a house. I'm just going to sow into you. I'm a, I believe in seed time and harvest. And I know it's gotten twisted sometimes and people use it to manipulate it. But seed time and harvest is still biblical. So what are you sowing? If you don't have any seed in the ground, but all you have is a sale, S-A-L-E, that after that money goes away, then you're going to say, well, God just didn't provide and take care of me. Do you have any seed? Have you sown into anybody else other than yourself? All right. I love you guys. Can we just group hug? Let's just group hug. <laughs> but I love you guys and I pray that you just receive this. Make sure you register for the 2019 Pinky Promise Conference by going to pinkypromiseconference.com. If, if you watch this after the conference, it's okay. We got a conference every year. pinkypromiseconference.com. Make sure you check it out. Love you guys.